guys, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. Today we're going to take a look at what sold on Poshmark in the month of August. Uh, let's just jump right on in and take a look. So I've pulled up a few items from our Poshmark sales in August to show you guys. A couple of these are bolos, definitely, and some of these are bread and butter filler items that I do like to put on Poshmark because of the fact that the buyer always pays shipping over on Poshmark and you can ask even for a little bit more on bread and butter and filler items over there you can make a little bit more than eBay so I pulled out a handful of items to show you we sold a little bit more than what I'm about to show you in the month of August I will admit that our Poshmark sales in August were very very slow you guys know our eBay sales were very slow as well I think that was a general consensus across the board as we came to the end of the summer sales were just down our Poshmark sales have been picking up in the past week, um, but we have been more active on Poshmark. It's definitely a platform, even more so than eBay, that if you're not active on it every day, if you don't do something on it or touch it or share your closet or list something, you're not going to have any sales. And then when you do start to put the effort into it, it does pay out almost immediately. Um, I started getting back into the routine after being sick last week on Poshmark of sharing two to three times a day and listing every day and I immediately started to see daily sales every day this week. So Poshmark does absolutely pay out for you almost immediately upon being active but on the flip side if you're not active enough you're not going to see sales. That said I would like you guys to um, if you haven't already watch my video called our Poshmark is on fire. I'll have it pop up at the end of the video up top for you guys. It's from about a month ago when we were having daily sales and it talks about everything I was doing to increase our sales on Poshmark. It's a good video for you guys to watch so you can kind of get an idea of what I do and create a routine and a system for yourself for Poshmark that's going to work for you to see more sales. That said, Keep in mind how many active listings you have. If you have around 500 or more on Poshmark, you can expect to see consistent sales. If you have less than that, you're not really going to see the kind of sales that are going to come in daily or consistently. It just is. That's just how it is. Um, on eBay, you typically don't see daily sales or consistent sales until you have around 1,000 listings, with some exceptions if you're into like electronics and stuff like that. But Poshmark is a platform that needs the, the volume of listing as well as the activity. So if you're doing everything you're supposed to do, you watch my Poshmark is on fire video, and you're still not getting daily sales, just take a look at how many active listings you have and keep in mind, it's around 500 listings and 10,000 followers on Poshmark, plus the effort and the work put in every day where you'll see daily sales and consistent sales. 10,000 sounds like a, not, a lot, but it's really not. It's very easy on Poshmark. So I do want to help everyone increase their sales for Q4, not only on eBay, but also on Poshmark. So make sure you watch that video. Make sure you create a routine for yourself. Get your bullet journals out, your to-do lists, so that you're doing what you need to be doing on Poshmark every day to make those sales. You can make more money over there. Yes, their fees are 20%, but you don't pay listing fees. You list something once, it sits until it sells, it's not renewing every month and costing you money. You're not paying a store subscription, and the buyers pay the shipping. So overall, I feel like you make more money on Poshmark. As I show you each of these items today, I'm going to tell you our cost of goods and the Poshmark fees, and then our total profit on each item, and you will see that you can make more money on Poshmark. So let's jump right on in. This is a Woolrich red button front shirt. Keith picked it up at Goodwill because it was 99 cents and it was new with tags. It is a size large, so it's an okay size. We did list it on Poshmark for $12. This is a bread and butter, just kind of filler item. It did sell for the $12 and we profited $8.60. Here's a pair of CJ Bakes straight leg comfort waist jeans. Uh, this is a brand I do not source anymore, so this is an older pair of jeans that's been around for a while. Um, I picked it up for 99 cents. It's a plus size. It had the comfort waistband, um, but I still feel like it took so long to sell that even plus size, I'd be iffy if I'd get it. Um, 
maybe if it was the middle of winter and I was really trying to push up the amount of listings I have with bread and butter items. Uh, but yeah, these cost us 99 cents. They sold for 15 on Poshmark, less fees than our cost of goods, $11 profit. You guys, BKE jeans, men's, are a bola. The men's BKE jeans will always have a name like Jake, Tyler, Derek. There's a ton of them. If you find them, they are definitely, definitely a bolo, something you should be purchasing or sourcing. The women's BKE jeans, not so much anymore. I'm lucky if I can get 2025 20, for them. So my general rule with women's BKE jeans is 99 cents. I'll pick them up. Otherwise, no. But I will pay up to seven dollars for these men's BKE jeans. I start them on Posh, or sorry, I start them on eBay. Fifty dollars free ship, and I usually take a best offer around forty. So selling them for thirty-five on Poshmark is good with the buyer paying the shipping. These came out of the box we purchased back in July, the giant wholesale box uh, we purchased from someone going out of business on eBay. So the average cost for everything in the box was like $2 and some change per item. These sold for $35 minus a uh, shipping discount we did give the buyer because I know that I offered uh, $35 on these. We profited around $24 on these all said and done after cost of goods, fees, and shipping discount. Wrangler Flame Resistant Jeans, definitely a bolo. The first pair I ever picked up was 99 cents, picked it up on a fluke to try it. I don't typically source Wrangler at all, but the flame resistant intrigued me and these are now something I look for and I will pay up to 6.99 for. They um, go really fast. Most of the flame resistant jeans I've listed have sold on one or other platforms within two to three days of being listed. These were a men's size 38, so it's a good size. It's the flame resistant. And they did sell for $37. So after fees and our cost of goods, $28.60 profit. Gloria Vanderbilt. Let's have a little talk about Gloria Vanderbilt. Not a great brand, but it is a brand I will source jeans in. I should say I only source jeans at Gloria Vanderbilt. Everything else I kind of just pass on. And I have a general rule, size 14 and up, or something is unique about the jeans. You can see these are only a size 12, but they're orange. So when I find Vanderbilt jeans that are collared like this, any color, stripes, designs, animal prints, and they're 99 cents, I do pick them up. So that's the rule. They have to be 99 cents, size 14 and higher, or something is unique about them. They do pretty well. The plus size ones go pretty fast for me. They flip for pretty good money. Um, and the collared ones do really, really well. These sold for $24 on Poshmark, which leave, left us with a profit of $18.20 after our 99 cent cost of goods. Here's a Coogie shirt. I don't know if you guys, do you guys say Coogie or Coogee? I've heard both. I say Coogie. Anyway, this brand is a definite bolo. We pick it up anytime we find it. The men's button front shirts, the men's jeans do really well. They fetch high prices. The only thing is, is they are very long tail. So if you wanna pick this brand up, if you find the men's jeans and men's button front shirts, um, you know you can get higher prices for them, but they're gonna sit for a while. We spent $5 on this particular one and it sat for a while but it did sell on Poshmark for 26 so minus our cost of fees $15.80 profit here's a pair of the limited I typically do not source the limited brand but this one I was curious about the 678 I wondered if that was gonna be better so I risked it with for 99 cents and it was a size 0 just like the plus sizes, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the really small sizes, double zero, zero, one, twos, I do really well with those, just as good as I do with the plus size. So I brought these home for 99 cents. They sold on Poshmark for 15, 
minus fees and cost of goods, $11 profit. Torrid. Torrid is a definite, definite bolo. This is a plus size brand. A lot of women love Torrid. It is definitely a trusted plus size brand. It is a sought after brand. People just like Torrid. So this is a bolo if you ever find it. This particular pair I was lucky enough to find for 99 cents, size 16. They sold on Poshmark for $29 after their fees and my cost of goods, $22.20 profit. Here's a pair of my infamous booty jeans. You guys know that when I find booty jeans for 99 cents, I snatch them up. I typically only really source these in great quantities from April through August and I don't look, really look for them from September through March but once spring is close and all through summer if I find 50 pairs of booty shorts at Goodwill for 99 cents that day I pick up all 50 pairs the denim ones like these jean shorts and the khaki chino kind any size, any color, any design, any brand. If they're 99 cents, I come home with stacks. They flip really fast and they flip for good money. An example would be like Hollister. I won't even source Hollister jeans anymore. I just kind of stay away from Hollister. As a general rule, that brand is kind of meh. Abercrombie and Finch is the same. I can find jean shorts like this that are booty shorts, distressed, or something like that from Hollister or Abercrombie and I can get 20 or $25 for the shorts but you can't give the jeans away anymore. Uh, so these are, you know, bo uh, booty shorts are bolo definitely. I wouldn't source them in great abundance in the fall and winter but if I found a great deal I would say if someone had 20 pairs for 5 bucks at a yard sale, sure I'd get them. Anyway, this particular pair is Guess. I listed them on Poshmark for 12. They sold for the full asking price. And my profit was $8.60 after fees and cost of goods. These were $0.99 cents at the Goodwill. Here's a Disney hat. It's a youth hat. I'll show you the tag in just a second. Youth. There it goes. Walt Disney World Disneyland Resort. Found it for $0.99 cents at the Goodwill. Anything with the Walt Disney World Disneyland Resort tag is a bolo. Whether it's a hat, a shirt, a plush, a coffee mug, a glass. If you see anything from the actual Disney parks, it is a bolo. Always. Not all of them are home runs, big hitter money. This sold for $12. But $0.99, cents, I did bring it home and found out it was only going to sell for 12 But that's okay. Um, Disney's still a bolo, you guys. Disney's always a bolo. If you ever doubt yourself and you have the time, you can comp it at a store before you buy it. You guys know 99% of the time I don't comp anymore. If it's 99 cents, I just bring it home with me and I run the risk. Um, if it's going to be more money than that or it's new to me and it's expensive, I do comp, but typically I don't. Anyway, this Tinkerbell hat sold for $12, so after Poshmark fees and cost of goods, it was a profit of $8.60. So that's the last thing I was going to show you from the highlight reel of our Poshmark sales in August. Again, they were kind of slow, but they are starting to pick up again, as are our eBay. You guys, we have about two and a half weeks left until Q4. I feel like we're all climbing out of that final end of summer slump as we go into Q4. So just make sure that you're preparing as much as you can. List, list, list. I cannot express that enough. People shop in Q4. You want to have a ton of items for them to shop from so you can maximize your profits and make the most of Q4 for you. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, guys. How has your Posh sales been? Do you need any help to increase your sales or your activity on Poshmark? Let me know if you want any tips or tricks. If things are going great, let me know what kind of magic you're working. Make sure you join our Facebook group. Link is in the description box down below. It is the absolute guaranteed fastest way to get a hold of me. But you can leave comments on the video if you choose. I do answer all comments and questions 
on our videos. It's just sometimes I get behind and it takes me a little while. Hit the thumbs up before you leave, guys. It really helps the channel. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. Go be productive. Go make some money. And I'll see you Sunday night.